Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So today I have a little bit of a different video today. It's not really going to be a guide. I uh, just wanted to let you guys know the Righteous Fire build hit level 100 uh, a few days ago. I think it was on Sunday. Um, just to kind of tally a little bit on where we were. And this character is not min-maxed by any means, right? It's just kind of where I stopped my gearing. So we were sitting at 760k life tap, or sorry, 760k RF tooltip with life tap. Uh, that goes up significantly higher in maps, up to like 900k when I have my three frenzy and my actual sadist going, because sadist is not going to happen in hideout. Um, this character was rocking, ironically, pretty low armor, uh, like 38k without molten shell, 37k, 87 all res, cap chaos, you guys spell block, etc. Attack block cap with an Aegis. Um, HP kind of low, but with chaos cap and block, you're you're fine. I had no deaths from level 98 plus onwards um, once I got my melding set up. As for the lower armor, the low armor gets nullified by the fact that I have the 7% physical damage fracture, the 12% physical from hits taken as fire and lightning, and then I also snag the Watcher's Eye for dot multi with malevolence and 8% fizz from hits taken as cold. So I character did not really struggle with physical damage at all. But yeah, um, since that's pretty much done, I don't want to spend too much time talking about this character. Uh, we can go over the plate, wasn't really that impressive or anything, can go over the deaths, nothing that crazy. Um, but yeah, so with that being said, I want to get on the new project. So let's jump right into it. Uh, we're going to be restarting an SSF. If you guys are unaware, I've been doing this now the past uh, two to three leagues. Um, so since I had my fill with Trade League, I still might go back, make another build, do some challenges, right? There's still like RF Trickster and some stuff I want to do, but I need a break from all of that right now. I need a break from trading. <laughs> so... Uh, we are going to be restarting in Solo Cell Found, um, SSF Softcore, I don't play Hardcore anymore. And we're going to be starting this journey off as a Juggernaut, this go-around. Um, so I want to talk about some, some reasoning as to why Jug over Inquisitor. Now, number one, overall, more than anything, it's for the experience, right? It's for the experience of getting to understand the Jug progression with the new untiring reworked node and the new unbreakable, right? So these are like the main two things. Also, versus Inquisitor, uh, I think it would actually be easier to get Jug set up. Um, not running RF. Running RF is not hard anymore. But what I mean is like when you're entering red maps, Inquisitor will have to go block based, right? And your chase item is going to be getting an Aegis. Obviously, you don't need an Aegis for anything. But your other big chase item would be getting an Aegis Aurora and either a Replica Soul Tether. Or not Aegis Aurora, sorry. Shaper Life Kit on Block Shield. Replica Soul Tether or Burden of Truth, and I'm very comfortable with getting both of those um, in SSF. Not Replica Soul Tether, I'm not a heister actually, but I just want to try Jug Progression, right? I've been playing Inquisitor for a long time. I really love trying new types of RF builds, so we're going to be starting off with Jug, um, and um, yeah, I would say one of the bigger trade-offs of Jug is Unbreakable potentially can make you so tanky, you may be able to skip being block-based, um, you may be able to skip melding of the flesh entirely and need no spell suppression. So this is where my investigation kind of uh, will turn to and, and, and really see what Jug has to offer us. So our tree is going to be pretty bare bone. Now, before I start, this is not a guide. Uh, I'm not expecting anyone to follow this. I, I just wanted to present it in a way that is maybe understandable for my audience, right? So uh, this is going to be my start. It looks very um, appealing. As you can see, we get a lot of damage nodes at the start. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna assume that the um, the recipe we used on League Star for Inquisitor. I'm gonna do the exact same thing for Jug. You know the flat fire to spells, uh, and we're just gonna level with like Holy Flame Totem probably. And I, I don't really think we're gonna have a problem to be honest. Uh, once I get to like right here, right, which is like 19 or something, uh, you get the big Ellie damage at Divine Judgment. And then up here, you actually get minion damage. And people will go, why do you have minion damage? Well, you get 10%, 10%, and then you get 20% with 1% regen, and then you get 16%. And then Spiritual Aid makes it so increase in reductions to minion damage also affects you, which actually makes these okay, especially when you take the 1% regeneration into account. Uh, then you get the 16% minion damage, then you get a 20% minion damage, and then when we come into Templar later, we get Retribution because it gives us increased damage, attack speed, cast speed, strength, and int. 
and then an additional 15%. And this is always something you can gear out of, but it should make leveling very smooth. And I'm probably going to keep it all the way up to red map, so I don't really see myself having to drop this for a while. Then there's also a chance with running all the incursions, we drop like a minion damage scepter, in which case we could make use of this with minion damage. Um, later on, this is like a significantly higher POB. You can kind of see where the character lies. Uh, very, very high. Again, because it's designed for me, I am very comfortable getting to mid-90s on a character. Um, yep. So the auras I plan on running here are going to be something like Determination, Malevolence, Tempest Shield, Skitterbot with Vitality on Arrogance. A little concerned about running Vitality on Arrogance, but... Um, I really feel like the character is going to be super tanky, so I can warrant doing this. If not, we could do some funky reservation to get it going. Uh, we get about 167% life on tree. That's not including an open jewel socket here that has literally nothing in it. Uh, so I'm really excited to see how this goes. If this version is too squishy, then I have another version where basically I'm dropping Heart of Flame, Breath of Flames to go block based. Um... So block base would basically entail grabbing Arcane Guarding, Sanctuary, Glancing Blows, Shaper Life Gain on Block Shield. You know, so the block variant, we go this way. So whereas we do lose like Arsonist Breath of Flames, we do at least grab, or sorry, lose Heart of the Heart of Flame, Breath of Flames. We do grab Arsonist with this route, right? So if you look. But this is something I'll respec into when I get a Shaper Life Gain on Block Shield, assuming it's needed. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. I uh, did not put anything for items. I don't really care to, uh, yeah. I kind of want this to be more about the journey. I don't want to put everything in POB and then just follow it. Um, yep. Other than that, I don't really think there's anything else off the top of my head. Um, oh, oh, I guess there is one thing. So, choice of ascendancy here. Uh, I plan on grabbing unyielding first. So, uh, it's probably actually going to be untiring, unflinching, unyielding, unbreakable. I only say that because... I don't think I'll struggle with any content to like late yellows, mid reds, or unless Arc Nemesis is just stupidly angry in the early game, then I can deny taking Unbreakable until like later, and this will just give me a nice surge of damage and AoE. Now, one of the interesting things is Unyielding is 6% AoE per Endurance Charge. So we get 6 Endurance Charges as Jug, we have 3 by default, 1 plus Unflinching, one on the tree here, which is totally fine to take because of the regen. One over here, which is fine because it's basically like one point if you're going for the two point jewel socket. Four plus two is six. Six times six is 36%. 36% plus one AoE node, right? So 36 plus one AoE is 46% AoE. If we were to look at an actual gem here, so 46%. So a maxed ink AoE is 49% AoE, meaning we could technically take unyielding down here, spec one extra AoE node, right? And replace ink AoE or efficacy to get a 24% damage multi until we get something like awakened um, ink AoE or we get enough damage where we feel we can put an AoE support back. But still, with this setup, I don't lose any AoE, and I gain 24% more damage over time. Uh, so that's kind of something I'm looking forward to as well, something a little interesting to hopefully alleviate some of the early game damage issues when we, you know, couple that plus the, uh, like, the minion scaling early game. Hopefully it will work out well. All right, and then last, before we hop off, I've made a new 3.19 RF Jug SSF goal sheet. Uh, you guys can, you know, just copy it, make a copy if you guys want to follow along as well. Basically, whenever I do something, I'll put a little check mark by it. So some common things here would be like uh, Kill Squidward, Searing Exarch, Maven, Uber Ziri, Awakener, Uber Elder, Four Watchstones, Feared, Putrid Cloister for Multimod, for Scepter, get a Dawnbreaker, get a Death's Rush, Ashes of the Star, Legacy of Fury, Ascent's Gentle Touch, Watcher's Eye, that's usable, Brutal Restraint, Lethal Pride. Lethal Pride is in here because Jug can benefit from Lethal Pride, which is Rakaita for Tempered by War. Yeah. Uh, Brass Dome, Headhunter, I don't even know why this is in here, I hate Headhunter. Uh, Mage Blood, Item Level 4, Scepter for Void or Opal Base, which are the 40%ers. 
Uh, find an Aegis Aurora, which I'm not going to use on Jug, but I can make an Inquisitor with it. Craft gain charges on Flask, use on full. Gain a non-corrupted six-link armor ES. Fixed. Uh, craft the Righteous Fire Scepter, find an Elder 82 plus helmet, craft an Elder helmet for RF, uh, 21 or RF 2120 Fire Trap, Master of Fire Cluster Jewel, I don't even know if I'm using a cluster yet, so we'll have to see on this one, craft a Shaper Percent Life Gain on Block Shield, find Awakened Burn, find Awakened Ellie Focus, find Awakened Swift Affliction, find Awakened Ink AoE, acquire Enlighten, acquire Empower, enchant your helmet, enchant uh, Legacy of Fury, and then level four and light and level four and power. I might also put a uh, exposure gloves here, or maybe here exposure gloves. Because exposure gloves are pretty big nowadays. Uh, betrayal. So this is the unveiling. Um, this would be Gravicious. The physical and fire is lightning. Plus one AOE gems. Three percent flask regen. Uh, hybrid craft for chaos res. Unveil fire multi. Unveil fire damage and ignite chance. Unveil minimum frenzy. Uh, unveil increased damage on rings. Unveil increased damage during flask on gloves. I think there's also increased damage on belt, but I don't know if that's betrayal. Uh, then I'll be making progress videos. I guess I could technically upload this, but I don't really think it warrants it. And then this is like another league mechanic where this is Calandra. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm thinking of doing Calandra slash Delve and then put some Delve check marks in here, but I'm not really sure what I would want from Delve outside of Scorched Fossils. Yep. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I'll be live here probably in the next 30 minutes to an hour. So if you guys want to check out the jug progression, feel free to hop on by. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much about it. So I'm out. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox before I hop off. Do not forget that the purpose of this as well is to help newer players follow along. Um, every day or every other day, I will upload a YouTube video covering kind of what I have done, why I have done, etc. And then I'll have a POB link. So that way, newer players who are still progressing through the league can maybe use some of these videos as assistance or guidance as to, you know, why I'm doing something or what you do with limited currency. Anyway, see you guys all later. Thanks for watching.